you talk about when the president and his cabinet were contemplating the decision, and the CIA director says 50-50. Put me in, were you in the room, Dave? And if so, put me in the room with you and how that unfolds. I was not. And I, you know, uh, my boss was, and he's the one that tells the story, but uh, it was just a handful of people in that room. It's the president that goes around his, you know, to his cabinet members and says uh, to Leon, hey, what do you think? And the head of the CIA, whose information intelligence we are using to go on this mission, whose analysts are saying, we can't be more certain that it's him. Never 100%, but if you can get to 99, we're at 99 right now. So he does the, uh, you know, the political tap dance and says, ah, it's 50-50, you know, and um, if he had any courage, he would have said at least 60-40 or something like that. (laughs) All around that table, the the president went asking his cabinet members, and uh, except for one person, uh, they all said, don't do it for various reasons. Even the secretary of defense, who is a Republican, and a great guy, politics aside, you know, I don't care what you are, but Gates was well aware and had been involved in the, the, the failed mission in Iran in 1979. And he knew what it did to Jimmy Carter. And he said, don't do it. You know, at, at this point, bin Laden is, you know, he's nothing anymore. And it's too much political risk. And that was basically the theme all the, all the, all the way around the room. Well, the, the, the big tough SEALs and, and military personnel sitting in there weren't saying a word, just kind of bowed their head as they watched this trajectory uh, just go down. Their chances of executing the mission was just going away because of the, you know, the lack of political will. And at that moment, you know, uh, that young analyst that I, I talked about comes off the top rope, uh, raises her hand, essentially says, hey, sir, to the president, it's him, you know, and here's how I know. And she laid it out for him. Uh, and to his credit, the president went with her. As I tell people, that's an incredible moment of courage. But what you want to create, if you can, and you have your druthers, and it's possible, is an environment where that kind of, you know, Wonder Woman-esque uh, courage isn't necessary. You know, it's th- that should be the norm. Anybody else got anything, you know, and that's, unfortunately, that's not the kind of environment that we create in the, in the United States military or in the United States government. You know, it's, it, it is all deference to the authority. Unfortunately, that's not a, a good way to go. So true, Dave. And it sounds like that's a great example of, you know, we think about courage in terms of physical courage. And so much of the raid and the execution of bin Laden talks about the physicality. And here we had this young female agent showing moral courage. Why isn't that more known? Why aren't we lauding and celebrating and amplifying the more moral courage moments in tandem with the physical courage? You know, I just spent the three days with my former teammates. Their questions are all about you know, how do I approach the person above me? In an operational SEAL team, it's egalitarian. I would expect you to come up to me and say, you know, hey, uh, I have a concern, right? Outside of that, though, inside of that hierarchy, which is the SEAL teams as well in general, it's not that way. That behavior is not rewarded uh, because now what are you going to do? You are basically questioning me. So you're questioning and our interpretation of that is you're questioning my self-worth. You're questioning my competence. You're questioning all of these things. And we don't respond well to that at the neurochemical level. We don't respond well to that. Yet if we want to be, and this is, I know this is important to your community, right? If we want to be adaptive, if we want to learn, we have to create that environment where it's okay to say, hey, I have a concern. This goes back, you know, I, I, a great example is not just the military, it's NASA, right? It's the uh, Gene Krantz, right? The, the guy who was the head of uh, mission control, the Krantz dictum, I think it was called. But, you know, after Apollo 1, uh, you know, those, those three astronauts die on top of that rocket, you know, and he said, hey, you know, they're sitting on a pile of hydrogen, a bomb, but nobody has the courage to raise their hand and say, hey, damn it, stop. And he said, we, we have to change that. And we're, how we're going to do that is, you know, competence was their big thing. But he said, now, from now on, we're going to be tough and competent. And by tough, he meant we're going to open ourselves up to some harsh, critical feedback. And that's going to be the price of admission for mission control and for NASA. And that's what they did. As I will tell you, inside of a SEAL team, that feedback is essential. It, it's information that's going back and forth uh, between operators of all ranks. And there is, there is not a a recognition of rank in those times. And that's why those small units are adaptive, they're flexible, uh, and why our our hierarchies 
that are more dominance oriented and status oriented and rank oriented are not. Leaders, formal leaders can set the example by opening themselves up uh, in that way and, you know, and talking about their vulnerabilities and recognizing that, you know, we have such an, it's back to this authority bias. We are all encumbered by that bias, uh, constrained by it. And some people to the extent where it doesn't matter necessarily what kind of environment you create, they're not going to say anything to you. They're not going to challenge you. You've got to suck it out of them. And that happens in SEALs too. Uh, we're human, right? And so the best leaders I've ever known are the guys that would stand right up and talk about their mistakes. And over time, it's not perfect, but over time, younger operators will go, huh, he stands up and talks about his mistakes. Maybe I can talk about my mistakes as well. And maybe we can learn from those, you know, and that's the intent.